In Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 and 2, is what I'd like to start off reading today. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Then verse 2, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. The word wise is number 5429 in the Strong's Concordance of the Greek language. It means to be thoughtful, discreet, and it implies to be cautious. It means having understanding. Yet when you look up the word foolish... It's number 3474 in the Strong's Concordance. Now listen to this. Don't laugh and cackle too much. It means dull, stupid, heedless, don't pay attention, won't listen to something. It literally means blockhead. It means absurd. So when Jesus talks about ten virgins, five are wise and five are foolish. What does that have to do with you and me? The word virgins is number 3933 in the Strong's Concordance, and it literally means an unmarried daughter, a maiden, and it's likened in the Bible to a woman who is going to marry Jesus Christ at the return of Christ. So God likens his people to a woman or maiden. The church is likened to someone who is to be very thoughtful concerning something. This is the wise individual. These wise virgins, or this wise woman called the church, was to be cautious. She was to have understanding concerning something that was vital to them. They took their lamps, and they actually went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now let's drop down to verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now the wise took what is called symbolically the Holy Spirit. That's what oil, according to most Bible commentators, say this represents, the Holy Spirit. So the wise are those who were cautious, those who were thoughtful concerning something that we're going to identify before we're through. They took the Holy Spirit. They kept the Holy Spirit with them at all times. Never allowed the Holy Spirit to leave them. They were cautious to make sure it was with them. Right on to the very moment when Jesus Christ returned to this earth. But what does the Holy Spirit do? If it was so important that they had the Holy Spirit at all times and never let it leak out as a sieve, in John chapter 16, notice verse 13. Howbeit when he, and this is a pronoun, it's in the masculine gender, so it had to be translated he. The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. Notice the very purpose of the Holy Spirit in our life is to guide us into all truth. Not just a portion of it and then leave us so that we're then stranded, not knowing the rest of the truth. But these wise virgins always had their vessels filled with oil. The vessel is our human body, and the Holy Spirit is to be inside of us. Now verse 6, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. So the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, was literally coming down to this earth. We were to go out and to meet them. These virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Notice there's ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. All ten of those virgins trimmed their lamps. They went to their vessels. They determined whether they had the Holy Spirit or not. Verse 8, The foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. 
The word gone, when you look it up in the Greek language, it should say are going out. It's not completely out yet, but the Holy Spirit has been allowed to leak out as a leaky vessel because of certain factors in their life so that they were so low on oil, the light of God was about to completely be extinguished. Verse 9, but the wise, remember these were the cautious people. These were the ones who had understanding. They were very discreet. They were thoughtful. They answered saying, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. In other words, those that were always aware as to whether they had the Holy Spirit, whether they asked for it every day, they were not about to give of what they had because someone else was negligent. Because salvation is a personal thing. You and I cannot motivate someone else. You and I can only tell them what the Bible says. We can try to inspire them to achieve to it. But we cannot force them to do it. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Now remember, this is only an analogy. This isn't an absolute fact. You can't go by the Holy Spirit. But repentance is required to receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 10, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. In other words, one group was prepared. They were waiting at that very instant. But the other group was not even around when Jesus came. Their lives weren't prepared so they had to go to prepare their lives to meet Christ. But while they were gone trying to get ready, Jesus came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Certain people went into the marriage supper of the Lamb. The others did not go. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Jesus said he didn't even know those people. And yet they at one time had the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Notice now the thoughtful, the discreet, and the cautious Wise virgins guaranteed that they maintain an ample supply of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them in Matthew 7. What was it about these wise virgins that qualified them to go in to the marriage supper of the Lamb? What was it? Can we know? And if we know, will then we be responsible for that and for performing it to make sure we secure our lives and that we will go into the marriage supper of the Lamb? In Psalms chapter 19, notice verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. It says, the law of God Almighty is perfect. Converting the soul. All right, God's law, when we look into it, tells us what sin is that brought the death penalty upon us. Then if we look into it and we repent, we get in harmony with what the law of God says. We quit breaking it. Then we become righteous in God's eyes. We are starting toward perfection. It says the testimony of the Lord is true, making wise the simple. You want to be a wise virgin? You want to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb and be a first fruit? Do you want to enter into the kingdom of God and literally rule planet Earth with Jesus Christ and bring salvation to the billions? Is this the greatest thing that could happen in anyone's life? If you want to be a wise virgin, it says the law of the Lord is perfect. It's what makes you wise. 
And there are 10 commandments in the very constitution of God's law. 10 of them, not nine, not seven, and they're not multiple choice. Repentance of any one of them that we're breaking and violating is absolutely required before you can become a wise virgin. I don't care what it takes. If you've got another God before the true and the living God that's holding you back from obedience to God, that idol must be removed. If the Sabbath day is stopping you from obedience, whatever it is that's stopping from obedience to the Sabbath must be removed. If our voice lies consistently, then we must remove the lying tongue from our mouth. Whatever it is that keeps us from obedience to God must be removed. Look at verse 8. The statutes of the Lord are right. So his holy days are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment, and the commandment is God's laws, precepts of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Do you want to know why many people claim to be Christian? but their lamps are going out? It's because their eyes are not enlightened because the law of God is not being kept. It's the law of God that enlightens the eyes. It's his statutes that illuminate the mind and let us have spiritual understanding. And the others in the Christian community that many times we call brothers and sisters because we accept their word that they are a Christian. Their eyes are not enlightened because they refuse obedience to God's ways. Therefore, they're not thoughtful, are they? They're not cautious about their spiritual life. They're not discreet. They're dull of hearing. They won't heed the words that are spoken from God's law. They'll not turn when they hear it. They think it's absurd to keep God's law. After all, haven't people come in and taught that God's law was done away? It was nailed to the cross? Aren't we told in Jude 3 and 4 that these are ungodly men that come in and change the grace, the forgiveness of God into a license to keep on breaking God's law? Yes, we're told these things. But the person who is the foolish virgin will not listen to the correction of the Bible. They'll not let the understanding of this book illuminate their minds so that they will enter in at the last trump into the kingdom of God and the marriage supper of the Lamb. In Psalms chapter 94, Psalms chapter 94, notice verse 3 through 15. I'll summarize most of it. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? In other words, we look around the world today and we see the wicked, those that break God's law. They're in the seat of power all over the world. They're the ones that it seems that has everything and we have little to nothing. We're the ones persecuted for our belief. They're not. Verse 4, how long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Those that break God's laws seem to be prospering and here we are, the ones obeying God, and we're the one that loses our jobs because of the Sabbath day and the holy days. He says, how long are you going to allow this? They break in pieces your people and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger. They murder the fatherless. Yet they say, here's what they say, the Lord shall not see. In other words, God is dead. He's not in the heavens. He's not looking down. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. He's not even paying attention to us. Look at verse 8. Understand, you brutish among the people, you fools, when will you be wise? He's asking a question. 
When will those of us who say we're Christians wise up? When will we become a wise virgin instead of a foolish virgin? When will be, we become thoughtful about God's ways that absolutely guarantees we'll go into the marriage supper of a lamb? When will be, we become so cautious about our lives and the way we live that we will transfer ourselves from the foolish state to the wise virgin category? How long is it going to take? What are we going to have to go through to cleanse us so that we will go into the wise virgin category? What's it going to take? How much persecution? How much tribulation? Because if God loves us and if we have his spirit, he will guarantee that we will be corrected in measure. If we listen to the correction, we can become wise virgins. But if we won't listen, we will remain foolish virgins. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? In other words, they said God won't listen. And yet right here it said God made your ear. Hadn't he got one that hears? Sure he does. He that formed the eye, shall he not see? God sees by billions of angels. And those angels go through and out the earth. And they're looking. I like to kid about it, but they've got their VCRs, their camcorders, and they're taking pictures of our life in living color. And they play it on a giant 31-inch screen up in the heavens, and God looks at us and sees what we're doing. Could this be true? If he's recording everything we do to make a decision, are we going to remain foolish or are we going into the wise category? And are we going into the marriage supper of the Lamb? Verse 10, he that chastises the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teaches man knowledge, shall not he know? I mean, if God is going to correct us, doesn't he know what correctness is? Doesn't he know what right from sin is? Verse 11, the Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are vanity. When is it that we're going to learn that our thoughts, based upon our own human convictions, are vain? They're vanity. And that we have to put God's thoughts into our mind to make us wise. When are we going to wake up? Verse 12, blessed is the man whom you chasten or chastiseth, O Lord, and teaches him out of your law. You know, you never find a place in the Bible where God chastises you to teach you that the law is done away. And you don't have to obey it anymore. Will you quit keeping that old law? I'm going to chastise you until you learn it's done away. He never once says it. He chastises to teach us out of his law what right and wrong is. Verse 13. That you may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. God wants us to come out so that when Jesus Christ returns and the door is thrown open for the marriage supper of the Lamb, you and I will enter into it. But those who ultimately will never submit their knees to Jesus Christ, they will go down into the grave forever. They'll never come out. Verse 14, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Do you think sometimes that the world is crumbling around you and caving in? Do you think sometimes that God has left you? Maybe you or I have left God. Maybe he is allowing chastisement to come upon us so that we will get back to his way of life. God promised that he would never leave nor forsake us. Never. That's an all-encompassing word. That means if we begin to have such troubles in our life, there's one of two explanations. 
Number one, God is correcting us in measure so that we will become a wise virgin. Or number two, we have left God somewhere along the line and he must correct us to bring us back into line and perfect us. Verse 15, but judgment shall return unto righteousness. If God is judging us now and we're committing sins, then he will chastise us until we quit the sinning and then we will become righteous. That's what makes us a wise virgin. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. God wants those who work evil to cease working evil. He sees the evil deeds. He says nothing will befall the righteous that he won't interfere and change it. If we'll only get right with him. But in verse 8, he says, when will you and I wise up? We're to be thoughtful, discreet, cautious about everything we do, every action we take, every thought that comes into our mind, every joke we tell. We're to make sure everything is in harmony with God's ways. Those who are taught out of God's law will become wise and ultimately receive the rest of of eternal life. Let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs are filled with wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, notice what he instructs. A wise man, and it's the species of mankind. So a wise individual will hear Understand that. A person who will become a wise virgin, not a foolish virgin, will hear God's instructions and will increase learning. It's called overcome. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Brethren, I want to observe a couple of things from this verse. You or I, if we're becoming wise in God's eyes and a wise virgin, will be like the Bereans in the book of Acts. When the apostles went there, they searched the scriptures to see if those things were true. If they were true, they retained them and they would not let go of them. If they were false, they discarded them. Number two, you should have an increase in learning. If you're a wise virgin, you will never stop growing. You will constantly seek out and want to know truth from God's word. You will want to know the truth and hold fast to it. Remember 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. In Proverbs 3, verse 7, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and repent from evil. Do you realize what he's saying? A cautious or wise virgin, church member, in God's eyes, will not think that he or she knows everything. That you're never wrong and you can't be corrected. But a wise man will take correction from God's word and his ministry if you prove that what that minister's saying is the truth. No matter what society says, you will obey the words of the living God. You will not slack off from those words when you prove what is right and what is wrong, but it will become a part of your consciousness. It will become a part of your mental concepts, your thoughts, and that everything you do will begin to mirror the Bible and God's words. You will become different 
from the rest of the world. You'll become different from the normal church member that you see everywhere in the world because you will love God's law and you will mirror God's law and you will act like God's law in your life. Peter gave a perfect example of obeying God rather than man. In Acts chapter 5, the apostles were told not to talk to the people around Jerusalem in the name of Jesus Christ. They were actually brought before the Sanhedrin. They were jailed. Then the apostle Peter answered those of the Sanhedrin. Verse 29 of Acts 5. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. If there is a choice in your life of obedience to God or going along with what men say and a worldly thing, if that worldly item, whatever it is, causes, causes you to break God's law, then you refuse it no matter how much pleasure it will bring. God's law is first in our life because, you see, God is judging his church today. 1 Peter 4.17 says judgment must begin at the house of God. The house of God is the church. It's the virgins. He's determining who are wise and who are foolish by how we live what we do, whether we obey or whether we give in to the dictates of man. Why is this important to you and to me that we obey God rather than men? Why is it important? Back in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 35, the wise, remember we're talking about wise virgins, the wise shall inherit glory. Is this what we're looking for? Glory? Aren't we looking for that new body that will be changed and will no longer have this flesh and blood body that has sickness, disease, it gets hungry, you grow gray-haired or maybe no hair? Don't we want to discard this body? Isn't this what it's all about? The wise shall inherit glory. The wise virgins will go into the marriage supper of the Lamb at the last trump. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. Who were the foolish virgins? Weren't they the ones who would not heed what God's word said? Weren't the foolish virgins the ones who were blockheaded? That's biblical. They were stubborn. They would not listen to God. They acknowledged him with his mouth, with their mouth, but they would not obey him from the heart. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23, in that day many will come to me and say, we cast out demons in your name? We've done many wonderful works in your name. What did Jesus say? I don't know you, you workers of iniquity. So not everybody that says I'm a Christian is a wise virgin. I don't know how many are and how many aren't. All I can tell you is that 50% out of the 10, half of them went into the marriage supper of the Lamb. The other half didn't go. This is an analogy. It does not necessarily mean that's an exact percentage, but it at least gives us an indication. There are bench warmers. There are people who will not heed, who cannot be stirred, and who will not keep God's law. Everything else stands before them and God. These individuals were to inherit glory, a new body. That's the wise virgins who went into the marriage supper of the Lamb. The wise virgins prepared their lives in advance, daily. They didn't wait once a year for the Passover to examine themselves. They did it 
daily to see if they were in the faith. They made sure if Jesus Christ had to cut the day short to save humanity, they would be prepared the instant that seventh trump sounded. They would become immortal at the seventh trump. But look at what the foolish virgins said. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 6 to 9. This is the foolish virgins now. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Remember when I actually gave the Strong's Concordance meaning of the foolish virgin? It was dull, stupid, heedless, blockheaded, absurd. It is someone that would not listen. They wouldn't be motivated to obey God. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider his ways and be wise. So once again, he's showing the opposites. A wise virgin compared to a foolish virgin. All right, ants have no guide. They have no overseer. They have no ruler. Provide, verse 8, her meat in the summer. They know instinctively to go out and provide food while food is available. And gather her food in the harvest. How long will you sleep, O sluggard, or foolish virgin? When will you rise out of your sleep? God is instructing that they must generate their own inspiration from the Bible and the Holy Spirit of God. Nobody can force obedience and preparation to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. I can preach to you till I'm blue in the face. I can know that God's Holy Spirit has inspired certain messages for the church. But if you're a foolish virgin and you will not listen and take heed, there's nothing I can do. After a certain period of time, God gives everybody a chance to grow. And when that growth period is over, and if you cannot be aroused and inspired and you will not become a wise virgin... God will chop you down and send you back into the world. It's that simple. Everybody must either produce fruit or they'll be cut down. Nobody sits still in the living church of God. God's Spirit is always leading us into truth. And those who refuse truth will eventually be cut off. Nobody can force anyone else to obey God. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 5, he gives instructions to the ministers of Jesus Christ. Look what he says in verse 3. Neither be as lords over God's heritage. I cannot be a dictator over your faith. God hates the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. The doctrine of the Nicolaitan is a church dictatorship where somebody absolutely dictates everything for you to do. How to brush your teeth, what toothbrush to get, what color car to drive, when you can drive, what job you have. No, God says, I, as a minister that he's called to teach you, cannot be a lord over your faith. I can't lord over God's heritage. I must preach to you, either you have the heart and the ears and the mind and the attitude to hear and to listen, or else eventually God will cut you out. I am to be an example to the flock. And that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to live God's law the best I understand. And if I don't understand it, then God will correct me in measure so that I can understand and not become discouraged. God will teach through his ministry. He is the one that selects the ministry. And those who teach you had better not be lords over his heritage. But you had better be inspired 
by the words of God and be willing to be corrected by them. If not, God will literally cut you out eventually. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1, we're talking about becoming a wise virgin, not remaining foolish. In verse 1, he says, Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. Wisdom is what we must have. Do you know what wisdom is? Many people live all their lives and they never understand what wisdom is. Wisdom is understanding all of God's laws, how they interrelate with each other to bring total happiness and perfection. When we understand God's laws and how they interconnect one with the other, then we become wise. But people who say God's law is done away can never become wise except in the ways of the world. They can never become godly wise because they're doing away with the very laws that teaches you godly wisdom. Now let's drop down to verse 32 to 36. Now therefore hearken or listen unto me. This is wisdom teaching. Wisdom is asking each one of us to listen to her. Listen, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. All of God's laws and understand how they operate, what they mean to us. <clears throat> Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. What did the wise virgins do? They were thoughtful. They were the ones who would be discreet. They were the ones who would be cautious to make sure they understood what God's law was saying. But the foolish virgins would not heed. They wouldn't listen. They were dull of hearing, would not comprehend. Verse 34, blessed or happy is the man that hears me. That's wisdom. Watching daily at my gates, waiting all the post at the post of my doors. In other words, you and I must be willing to stand right at the door of wisdom and go in and learn when a precious truth is exposed to us. Verse 35, for whoso finds me finds life. What did Jesus say? If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. If we are to have life, we're to keep the commandments of God, the laws of God, wisdom, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Who was it that went in to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Those who were the wise virgins. Those found favor with the Lord. Verse 36 but he that sins against me wrongs his own soul. All they that hate me love death. What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments. So if you hate Jesus, you won't keep them, and you'll bring the death penalty upon you. Nobody in the world is going to say, I hate Jesus. I won't keep his commandments. Nobody says that. They do it. They show they hate Jesus by not obeying him you know it's like human beings they can put on a church face I'm talking about any church anywhere at any time they can come they can shake the hand of the minister they can just smile and you'll just think that's the loveliest person on earth then they can go to the workplace and be an absolute ass excuse the word I felt it fit the occasion they can become just an absolute devil in disguise. That's not God. That shows we hate Jesus because we will not live like Jesus lived. And if we claim we're a Christian, be one. That's the way he looks at it. That's a wise virgin. A foolish virgin does not understand and will not obey because they don't have God's Spirit to capacity in them. Their light is about gone out. The Holy Spirit has leaked out of them like a big vessel. You know, like you boil, maybe um, you're going to have spaghetti. 
and you've got this big pot full of water and you want to get the water off of it and you pour it into a vessel that's a sieve and it has holes in it and all the water runs out. That's what a person who is a foolish virgin is. They're not obeying God so they're full of holes. Spiritual holes. And all the Holy Spirit is leaving them. What happened to Saul who was head and shoulders over everybody in Israel? And God's Spirit came upon him and he led them until he decided he was the leader instead of God. And he exalted himself and God's Spirit left him. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8 to 10 Reprove not a scorner. Who is a scorner? It's a mocker. Someone says, oh, oh, that law is done away. It was nailed to the cross. You mean you obey that old law? I can remember the first time I went down and was on a satellite talk show down in Gravit, Arkansas, on the uh, National Christian Network. The people afterward asked me about our doctrines, and I told them we kept the Sabbath and the holy days, the laws of clean and unclean meats, and they ridiculed me to no end. They were scorners. You try to reprove a scorner, he'll hate you. That's a foolish virgin. You try to reprove them and tell them to change their life, correct themselves, and become a wise virgin, and they'll call you stupid. They'll think you're a nut. There's nothing wrong with me. What do you mean trying to tell me I'm sinning? But notice what it says. Rebuke a wise man, or let's say a wise virgin, and he will love you. Why? Because you're teaching them the ways of eternal life, and you're going into the marriage supper of the Lamb if you will become a wise virgin. And they will say, thank you, I didn't even know that I was doing that wrong. Now I get it, I understand, my mind has been enlightened. Now I will obey that point of truth. Verse ten, 9, give instruction to a wise man, let's say virgin, and he will yet be wiser. He will grow. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Why in the world would this person increase in learning? What gave him the capacity to start learning spiritually? Verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we have a healthy respect for the creator God of the universe, that's what begins the wisdom collection process. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So why is it that people will become foolish virgins? Because they won't really fear and respect the creator who gave absolute laws to live by. As a direct result, they will not receive correction from God in his Bible. When you honor and respect and submit to God and his word, that's when you begin to learn. Chapter 10 of Proverbs, verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wants not sin. In other words, the more we talk, the more we talk, the more we talk, the greater the opportunity for sin. But he that refrains his lips is wise. Now, there's nothing wrong with talking. It's what kind of talk do you have? Certain talk will lead to sin. Other kind of talk is great. I love to talk. I love for people to talk to me. But there's certain things that if we do will lead to sin inevitably. When you can actually hold and control your tongue and not lash out with it, you have self-control. What is self-control? That's part of the fruit of God's Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, verse 21 to 23. It's part of God's Spirit in you when you learn to control the tongue. Those who ultimately become virgins, wise virgins, will be stable spiritually. And they will understand the proper use of the tongue and it will be visible in their life. In the New Testament, in James chapter 3, 
James chapter 3, we see a little about the tongue. Verse 1 to 12, I won't read it all. I'll just summarize part of it. But notice what he says in verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters or many teachers. Why? Because Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, it says God sits in the church. And it goes on and describes the teachers that he sets in the church, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So when I sit before you and I teach, I know who called me. There is no doubt who did it. I'm going to speak, but I'd better make sure I know what I'm saying to make sure that I'm not saying improper and wrong things that will take you in, out of the wise, wise virgin category into the foolish virgin category. I'm going to receive a greater judgment than you are because of the words that I speak. That's why it says, control that tongue. Verse 2, for in many things we offend all. I guarantee you the things I say on radio and television and in the printed words going to offend a lot of people because of their misteaching. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Then Paul goes on and shows how great ships are turned by a little tiny rudder down in the water, and how the tongue is an evil, it's a little tiny member. If you took the gross weight of the whole body and then took the weight of the tongue, it's a little tiny thing in comparison to the weight of the whole body. And yet verse 5 says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. But then it also says, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Verse 6, the tongue is a fire if it's not controlled by the Holy Spirit. See? A world of iniquity because the tongue speaks what comes out of the heart, the mind, the attitude. And when we are carnal in nature, carnal words will come out. When we are spiritual in nature, spiritual words will come out. So is, in the middle of verse 6, the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and ultimately, if we don't repent, it is set on fire in hell. It'll be burned up in the lake of fire. And then this scripture on down through verse 12 says, even wild animals can be tamed, but the tongue of man has never been tamed. But if you and I learn to tame the tongue, that's what shows we are headed toward perfection because we're gaining self-control. Remember Jeremiah 17, 9? I'll not turn to it, but it says the heart of man is desperately wicked and who can know it? That's the unconverted man. But then, I do want to turn to this scripture. In Romans chapter 8, it tells us that we must have the Holy Spirit. Remember the wise virgins, they had the Holy Spirit to capacity because they asked daily. They sought God for it. The foolish virgins was like a sieve, and it was leaking out, and their, the Holy Spirit was nearly gone. Verse 11 of Romans 8. But if the Spirit of Him, that's God the Father, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that's the Holy Spirit. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. If it's God's Spirit that's going to change you at the last trump from flesh to to a spirit-composed body, and then you go into the marriage supper of a lamb with a new glorified body, if you don't have that spirit, you're not going to be changed, are you? I think that's a legitimate statement. If there is no spirit, and if that spirit is the one thing, it's the qualifying factor that determines whether you'll be changed from a flesh body to a spirit body and go into the kingdom of God, if you don't have the spirit, you'll not be in the kingdom. Verse 13 and 14. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit 
do mortify, which means put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you, by the lifestyle you lead, if people can tell that you are a child of God, then you are being led by the Spirit of God. I'm going to summarize a couple of scriptures in the Proverbs and then go to my final scripture. In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, basically it says that a wise person's speech will lift up, it will build up, it will edify other people, but the foolish will destroy by their tongue. They tear down other people. Then in Proverbs 14, verse 3, it indicates that the wise, and we're talking about wise virgins, have overcome the sin of pride. We can call it what we want to. Hard-headedness. You know, there's an old song by Elvis Presley, hard-headed woman, soft-hearted man. You know, I mean, that, it's the same for men. Hard-headed men, hard-headed women. Stubbornness. We've got to put it aside. All of us have to do it. Rebelliousness. It's the same thing. Are we beginning to get the point? The opposite of humility. In Proverbs 14, verse 16, it says the wise, and we're putting in wise virgin, respects so much that he or she repents, has a change of life when they understand they must repent. That means a complete obedience to Scripture when we prove a truth is a truth. No compromise. No, we don't have to be obnoxious about it. We can just be stubborn in a righteous way in that once we prove the truth, we will hold on to it, but not in an unrighteous way. Proverbs 18.15 says that if you are wise or a wise virgin, you will desire and seek out the knowledge of the truth. Then you will combine that with correction to have a correct life. Then Proverbs 21, the middle and the last part of verse 11, says the wise, when they are instructed, they will accept knowledge and they will not fight back. They will accept the truth and submit themselves to it. Now let's go back to the very first scripture, Matthew chapter 25, about the wise and the foolish virgins. Jesus said in verse 13, to watch. Why did he say to watch? Go back to chapter 24, verse 45 to 51, and it says, if we begin to see that Jesus hasn't returned, let's say a minister sets a date and says, Jesus returned in 1989. No, 1992. No, we missed it a year. It'll be the Feast of Trumpets, 1993. Let's say somebody does that and you fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. But it doesn't happen. And you say, well, we don't know when Jesus returned. And you begin to go back into the world. You began to treat people ungodly. That's what it says in verse 45 to 51. Verse 51 says, If a person goes back into the world, he shall be cut asunder and appointed his portion with the hypocrites. What is a foolish virgin? Someone who's losing the Holy Spirit and begins to revert back to a lifestyle of disobedience. What does it mean to watch in Matthew 25, 13? Watch, therefore. It's number 1127. The word watch in the Strong's Concordance, it means keep awake spiritually. Be watchful every moment of every day of your spiritual condition. Brethren, you will make 
the decision as to whether you are presently and remain a wise virgin by your spiritual conduct before God and man. If you do not remain a wise virgin, you will slip and the Holy Spirit will slide out of your life and you will become a foolish virgin. I recommend you stay tuned for next week and the life of the foolish virgin.